Hello! Now that things are getting a little bit less crazy, I thought it'd be kind of nice to start doing more frequent uploads and I was hoping our next video was going to be us actually sailing our boat now that we're back in the water but unfortunately we're having some problems with the backstay and we can't sail the boat until that is fixed. Instead, I thought maybe it would be fun to do something a little bit different. This video is going to be about living on a boat with no fridge. So we've been living without a fridge for over a year now, close to a year and a half. We do have an ice box, but we don't use it as an ice box. The drain isn't actually connected to anything, so we really just use it as storage for the things that you would normally refrigerate. This is the ice box, as you can see, not that exciting. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the kinds of things that we buy when we don't have access to a fridge. Also going to show some of the types of meals that we make. Oh, and by the way, Jonathan is not going to be featuring in this video. We still have the room that we've been renting until the end of this month, and so we're taking the opportunity to get some much needed personal space. If you just came to this video to see Jonathan's beautiful face, then I'm sorry, you're going to be disappointed. The first thing I wanted to talk about is vegetables. Previously I would buy a lot of salad greens and things like spinach, but without a fridge those things just turn into like smelly green mush <laughs> within a couple of days. I still do eat my greens, but I eat different kinds of greens. Um, what I found is that I've turned a lot more towards cruciferous veggies like broccoli and cabbage. And I particularly like spring greens or I think they're called collard greens in North America as far as I know it's the same thing those are really great because they will keep for up to a week in no not in the fridge <laughs> outside of the fridge I also find that I now eat a lot more root veggies because again they tend to just keep for a lot longer things like carrots swede potatoes and I also really like squashes like butternut squash I already used <laughs> for this one. But before you cut into the squash, it will usually keep for weeks or even months at a time. I've also found it really useful to keep some tinned veg on standby for those times when you run out of fresh stuff. I think a lot of people also forget about pickled veg, pickled beetroot for example. <laughs> it's actually pretty yummy and it's a good way of having veg that won't go off. And while it says that it needs to be in the fridge, I found that it keeps just fine outside of it. In terms of fruit, I haven't really found that to be much of an issue because most types of fruit really don't need to be refrigerated. Um, the only thing that I don't buy is berries really because they don't take kindly to being outside the fridge. <laughs> but pretty much everything else can be kept at room temperature, particularly apples and citrus fruits. So I know people who go on long passages tend to stock up on a lot of those. You can get two different types of plant-based milks. There are the ones in the refrigerated section, and then there are the long-life ones, which are shelf-stable, which are usually kind of tucked away at the back of the supermarket. So obviously, if you don't have a fridge, you want to go for the long-life ones, and they happen to be a lot cheaper as well. They will keep for months in storage. Um, once you open them, I find that they will keep for up to a week. Obviously, this is dependent on climate. I know last summer, when it was really hot, we did have a few cartons that went off. As a butter alternative I just buy margarines made with vegetable oil like this one super basic cheap made with rapeseed oil again it will literally keep for months even once it's open sometimes if the weather's really hot it might get a little bit of mold on it <laughs> you can just scrape that off when it tastes fine underneath I know it sounds gross but it's never killed me <laughs> the same thing with vegan cheeses they're usually made from coconut oils they keep reasonably well at room temperature put them in the coolest place that you can and they will usually keep for a few weeks. And finally yoghurt. That's something I like to buy myself now and then as like a treat or a healthier dessert. I find that it's usually good for a few days. And now on to meat alternatives. The first thing is the obvious thing which is tofu and I buy this one 
which is vacuum packed and I find that it will easily keep for a few days before I open it and then once I open it I need to use it within a couple of days. It might even keep longer but I've never found out because I like tofu too much. You can also get this <laughs> shelf stable tofu. It's not firm tofu like you would normally use in a stir fry or whatever. It's silken tofu so it's kind of soft and puddingy. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing it's often used for actually is puddings, but you can also put it in soups and things I do also buy things from the refrigerated section Like these ham slices usually they'll keep for again a few days before you open them And then once you open them ideally they need to be finished within a couple of days and surprisingly even though I obviously don't have a freezer I still do buy frozen things on occasion and it's fine provided you use it in the first day Otherwise they start going soggy <laughs> if I can cook them on the first day then they'll keep a couple of days beyond that. And of course you also have staple protein sources like beans and lentils which you can buy dried or canned. The great thing about these is obviously they'll keep pretty much indefinitely with no fridge or freezer. You can also buy TVP which stands for textured vegetable protein and it's basically dried soya chunks or sometimes it's more like soya mints and they don't really taste of anything much so you have to add your own seasonings. And finally at some Asian supermarkets you can find tinned tofu or tinned seitan which is basically a meat alternative made from wheat gluten and you often see it sold as mock duck. So normally when you buy something like ketchup or mayo or barbecue sauce or whatever it will say on the bottle that it has to be kept in the fridge and in my experience that is not actually true. It's ketchup which has been open for months, it's completely fine. This mustard is actually technically out of date but it's still fine. <laughs> Things like tomato puree say they need to be in the fridge, but I have no idea why. There are certain things that don't keep as well. When I buy salsa, you can get two types, the salsa that's in the jar and the one that's in the bottle, and I find that the one in the jar tends to go off if it's not in the fridge, but the one in the bottle, like this, will usually keep for several weeks. Another thing that usually keeps fine out of the fridge is jam. Uh, this one, if you get crumbs in there, then sometimes the crumbs go mouldy and then the rest of the jam starts going mouldy. Keep the crumbs out and you're good for weeks, if not months. One tricky area for me has been hummus. The stuff you buy in the shop seems to go off within a couple of days. I have found if I make my own hummus, it actually keeps a lot better and it will usually keep for a few days out of the fridge. And I just wanted to give a few final tips. First one would be to do smaller but more frequent shops if you can because obviously with fresh stuff it's just not going to keep as long. The second one would be to keep things below the waterline as much as possible. A lot of people use the bilge. Unfortunately I can't do that right now. The bilge areas that would be useful are just not very accessible which is something I would like to change for now. I'm just keeping things right at the bottom of the ice box. I'd also suggest keeping in some pre-prepared tinned meals. So if you run out of fresh veggies and things then you can still have a well-balanced meal. Some examples are soups. This one is sweet potato and coconut. Also ratatouille, so that's a stew with aubergine and courgette and peppers. I've also seen things like vegan bolognese and also keeping lots of dried staple ingredients so that if you run out of fresh stuff you're not going to be completely out of food. We have grains like rice and pasta and oats and pulses like lentils and split peas and also seeds and seasonings, dried fruit like dates. Up here we have some nuts and things and also bread. As long as you do have your staples and you also have some tinned veggies on hand you can pretty much always make a well balanced meal. And the final thing I would say is to do an inventory of what you have pretty much every day, look at what needs using and just make sure it gets used. It does mean that you sometimes end up with weird patchwork meals. I saw an Instagram post the other day that said lunch doesn't always have to make sense <laughs> and they showed a picture of their food and it was just a random jumble of leftover I think that's a pretty good message. Now I'm going to show a few of the meals I make. Breakfast, I usually have either cereal or porridge. Today I've decided to go with cereal and <laughs> my Weetabix completely has fallen apart this morning. It's like it's deliberately trying to be unphotogenic. <laughs> Never mind. I like to have berries on my breakfast but they're expensive and also they usually only keep for a day or two. What I tend to do instead is to buy grapes and I found that these actually keep for 
up to a week, even outside the fridge. I much prefer to have red grapes, but when I went shopping they were out of stock, so stuck with green ones for this time around. And I'm also going to put some cacao nymphs on my breakfast so that I can feel a little bit fancy. And soya milk, obviously. Yesterday I bought these vegan chorizo style sausages and I bought them frozen which means by now they are thoroughly melted and they need to get used today or at least cooked today. So I'm gonna try and do something with these for dinner. I'm thinking of making a paella type thing. Please ignore how many crumbs are in the oven. This is what I'm using for veggies. I know it's probably not authentic paella vegetables, but I found it cheap and it has to get used today. Such is the way when you don't have a fridge. The thing I really love about this pan is it has a lid actually cover things and then they cook a lot faster. Just gonna toss in the rice and make them two servings so that I will have extra for lunch tomorrow. So traditionally, obviously, paella would have seafood in it. We have this seaweed in the cupboard that's been sitting there for months, so I figure I will toss some of this in there to help give it kind of a fishy flavour. Once you have all the ingredients in the pan, really all you have to do is just let it sit. Because I'm using brown rice, it's going to take quite a while, so I'm probably just going to go do something else for like half an hour while this does its thing. I just tried it and the seaweed actually did a really good job of giving it a, a fishy taste. Pretty strong though, so wouldn't recommend if you're not a fan of the fishiness. It is a lovely sunny evening and I've been in the boat all day wrestling a bilge pump and <laughs> I'm fed up and I want to go out in the sun. So I'm planning a little evening adventure. I'm going to cook myself up some food and then take it to the beach and eat it there and then I'm thinking I might go for a wander along the coast path if I can find it. I'm not actually sure where it is. <laughs> this is what I'm cooking. I found these veggie burgers reduced and also this stir fry kit which also includes a chilli. It's nice and colourful um, so I'm using this as like the meat in the stir fry if you like. I think it's a jackfruit burger. One day I'll start using a tripod so that I don't have to chop with one hand all the time. Burger is frying and I'm also making some whole wheat noodles. I keep seeing people go past in kayaks and inflatable boats and it makes me really want one. We did buy a dinghy last year, like a really cheap second hand one, but it lasted about two weeks before it developed a serious leak that we couldn't seem to fix. So that's a lesson that you should never cheap out when it comes to dinghies. Well, the burger looks done. I'm going to take it out so it doesn't go soggy when I'm cooking the vegetables. I just realised this is not going to be a proper stir fry because I don't have any soy sauce. <laughs> I took it all to the house, so it's going to be a salt fry. 
<laughs> if that's the thing. Some garlic. Probably too much salt. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how green vegetables just disappear when you cook them? I put an entire pak choy in here and it's just gone. <laughs> I think this is done, so I'm just gonna... Oh no, I lost one of my burger jugs. Mix this in and then again pack it into a little box and take it with me. Okay, I have my food, I have my water, and I have my sun cream, so I think I'm good to go. Seeing all these people out on the water is making me like really want to go sailing. I feel like 95% of the time so far that we've had the boat, we haven't been able to take it anywhere. It's such a pain. But hopefully it'll be fixed soon and then we can go out for a test sail. Beautiful is this evening light. I'm so hungry right now. <laughs> I'm hoping to walk over by the town because the beach is a lot nicer over there. Um, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna make it there before I give in and eat my dinner. This bit of the path is just all hedges. I can't actually see the sea at all, which is kind of sad. I'm hoping to get one more glimpse before I turn around and go home. It's quite a trek just to get back to the boat. My dreams have come true, I found the sea. I can go home happy now. Today I am going to meet up with my family who I haven't seen in maybe five months, way too long anyway. I'm going to kind of meet them halfway so they don't have to come all the way to see me and so we're going to meet up in the Gower which is an area of outstanding natural beauty that's its official title that's not just my description we're going to go to a nice beach I don't think we've figured out which ones yet mm -hmm. 